first of all, thank you for joining me for another video. I very much appreciate it. If you've watched my other videos, and if you haven't, you may in future still hear a certain tone of voice when I mention Schwerter. Because what you see here are, let me go through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 orchids from one order, which is about 50% of the entire haul. Remember, I'm trying to build a new collection and I'm thinking I've got a really, really good source. And then you get this. I'm saying this happened, uh, I got these orchids in September of 2018. So I've had a full season with them, plus now through the winter and spring. I have orchids that are much younger in my collection that have certainly shown a lot more progress. So I'm not gonna go on and on and on and on and woe is me because I've tried all that with Schwerter no result and this is what you heard from Schwerter regarding my email in English and in German after there was no response my customer review comment on their web page that they so highly praise that you do this is what you would hear yeah not much, hey? Meanwhile, I do love the sound of crickets. I am, after all, from Africa. And they make me feel whole. But not when you're a customer that spent a lot of money. What to me is a lot of money might be to other people not so much. But in my case, I thought it was a lot of money. And then you hear crickets. So I'm not going to go on about the orchids that we've already looked at the Stanfordianum you've seen that in an up close and personal I explained it likewise my oh I gotta remember to do this slowly I'm so sorry likewise my Rene Marquez crossed with Brasavola di Guiana and this is where the light changes a bit and you can see here now the bud is blasting and this blooming is deformed just like it did before despite the facts the growth are fine and then I'm not going to elaborate on the phalaenopsis that I have here on the end because we've visited them already in my delinquent phalaenopsis orchids if you haven't seen that video you might want to have a look at it but they are there just because I don't want to forget them but I do want to say for example that my little Leptotis Leptotis bicolor is blooming and I absolutely adore these blooms. I am so pleased that they are a bicolor. But having said that, I just wanted to make mention, none of these orchids were on the discount price tag, okay? This bicolor I got with, let me reach over, this one, this growth, and then these two little ones. Those are the three parts of the orchid that I got. No, it was not a discounted plant. I grew one growth right here myself uh, the first year when I got it. And then these two that are cut now blooming, they followed afterwards during the winter to my surprise. You know about my embryo, I've showed you that in the back. And you know about my pseudoepidendrum over here, I showed you that as well. So those are the, that's the quality if you can say that word, that I got from Schwerter. Here I have my Lobata Cerulea, which I paid also full price for. Maybe I shouldn't keep repeating that. None of these orchids were discounted. When I got this one, I had three little bulbs in the back here, and it was sold to me as near blooming size. All right, so in one year, I managed to grow one growth. I'm very grateful. Please do not take this video as if I wasn't grateful for the fact that some of these are still alive. I've lost a few based on the lack of vigor and quality of the plant. So there's that. 
And you can see that normally I have my own personalized tags, but all the Schwerter orchids, in case one day somebody wouldn't believe me, have their original tags. And I wanted to keep it that way because you never know. I didn't pursue it more aggressively. I didn't go after these people with a little bit more oomph in order to get my point across. But I did leave the tags just as a little note to self in the back of my head. And no, I'm not on a vendetta here, but I, it's kind of like a little explanation of why I say the word Schwerter in my videos the way I do. So the Francis Fox here is finally blooming. I'm so pleased. I explained that in another video. But the plant that I got at full price was this bulb, which of course has now dried out. That's to be expected. These two bulbs in the back and this growth here. So I had one growth with one leaf. I have my Zygonesia here. By some miracle, it bloomed last year and it bloomed on a growth that has since dried out. But what I got was three bulbs and this growth that then bloomed that promptly uh, lost its leaves. So last year, I'm, I'm quite happy to say that I got a fresh new growth from it and now it's starting a second growth. Here I have a Cordata, Xinying SMT Toga. I'm just reading the label. I'm not fully aware of this. So this is a Brassabona. What I got from them was this growth, this growth, and these two. So four sticks, okay? I grew one, two, three. This one is deformed because of how weak the plant was. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the sheath in time, so it kinked. This one growth here, it did bloom for me. Very sad little bloom, but I did take a picture, so I have it for my records. So there's Hing Sing, Cordata Sing Ying, sorry, Sing Ying. I'm gonna take this out of the way. And I'm going to show you my Brassavola little stars. Look at it. Your opinion is very, very welcome. This is a Brassavola little stars. I wanted to grow this and I intend to continue growing this for my Instagram followers. I put a post up there that little stars belongs to them. But this has done nothing for a Brassavola. I'm serious. Nothing. For... A year and a half well let's just say September 2018 and this is what I have to show for it so what you're seeing here is the plant as it came out of the package and I can honestly say I've seen better breasts of all the little stars come out of unboxings than this one to the point, I'm kind of wondering, are you even a Brassavola little star? Because the needles the, or the leaves, they're so tiny. But the picture looks, of the one bloom that I did get, the picture looks kind of familiar. But yes, have you ever seen such a sad little Brassavola little stars? I haven't, but now you have. The next one you saw briefly when I was talking about juveniles, and I pointed out a growth that was blackening at the base and here it is blackening at the base and it's completely gone. And this is the dynamic of this Chantilly lace that I have, I got this little bulb in the back plus the start of a new growth which failed, which then grew a bulb last summer, which pushed out another new growth, which, sorry, which pushed then out another growth right here last summer that bulb now is pushed out this little growth over here which has now failed and it's starting another new one in there so Chantilly lace it's not a complicated hybrid and I've seen others doing super well in a similar setup and you can see here bulb that I got for a full price with a new growth that failed. I did get a second growth in the following that during the, my first winter with it. And there it is. This is the summer growth. This is the first growth in the back there that failed. And here, now we're trying again. So I see a pattern. Enough of that. Let me 
move on to Giant Kiss. Right here. Black tips all over. It's another Brassavola. All these black tips, that's exactly how the plant came to me. This plant has done, in my eyes, absolutely nothing for the past year and a half that I've got it. So these tips are original to the purchase. That's how I got them. And it is pot bound now, so it's not that. It's not like it doesn't have any roots. So there's that. Just another example. And I could go on about this little fowl here, which is a Yin's Black Eagle. Not exactly a cheap plant, but whatever that is, I've managed to stop it. And the leaf is growing now. And what I got was a plant right here with one leaf, one blemished leaf. And I'm trying to grow this one with some form of success. My anosmum was also quite amazing in a negative sense. I got one long cane that I nipped the buds off to not stress it out so much. And I got this little cane right here. So it was one long cane and that cane. This one grew, or tried to, last year. And it grew two keikis which went to the orchid room. The keikis look stunning and healthy, so I'm hoping this plant will somehow recover to actually be what it should be. And then my little Wilsonii. Now, in all honesty, I'm not going to bang on about this one because it may just be one of the things, the traits that it has because it is a deciduous orchid. But uh, the roots that are on this plant are the ones that I grew. You can see there's roots right here growing around. Those are the ones I grew. I got two leaves. The mistakes I made with the wind and breaking the crown, those are mine, I own that. And now it's growing a spike. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty much rootless plant. So as I mentioned in my orchid tag, I'm not actually, I, I love buying orchids. It's what you get. How do you recommend or not recommend a nursery? But I just wanted to give an example of why I say Schwerter the way I do in my videos. For those of you who are interested, I have seen many, many, many orders since then come through. Everything's perfect, everything's pristine, great plants, etc. So I have no idea what happened on the day that my order was packaged and shipped. I have no idea because nobody got back to me. But having said all that, I just wanted to point out from my side why I pronounce the word Schwerter the way I do. So let's stay on a positive note. She's starting to get there. And I really appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so very, very much for all your support. Let me know if you have Schwerte orders that were similar or better, because I'm always open to change an opinion. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.